Owning a boat means fun days out, adventure, and having somewhere to escape to, even if to just sit in a marina and have a sundowner. It also brings with it several risks, which a sensible boat owner needs to be aware of and prepare for. In this video, I'm going to share the five essential habits I have to help keep the risk of my boat sinking as low as is possible, especially when I'm not on board. Hello, I'm David Pestridge of White Hat Marine Surveying, located in the beautiful county of Devon in the United Kingdom. My mission is to help people understand boats better. Now, sinking remains one of the most common causes for insurance claims for small craft. Most commonly, this occurs when nobody is actually on board the vessel. Sinking is, without trying to state the obvious, a state whereby more water is entering the vessel than is leaving. And if this state persists for long enough, the vessel will sink. And depending on its reserve buoyancy, this may leave it half submerged at the surface or allow it to sink completely. Sinking can be caused by heavy rainfall, swell and wave action, and by leaks in the hull itself. The routes for water to enter the hull are many and various, and every vessel will have its own selection of possible and probable entry points. The routes by which water can leave the vessel are also many and varied, but fall into two primary categories, drains and scuppers, and bilge pumps. Drains and scuppers can be found in cockpits, deck spaces, and the superstructure on most vessels, and their purpose is to use gravity to allow any water on the surfaces of the vessel to drain quickly and effectively back into the water around the vessel rather than entering the bilge. Bilge pumps, by contrast, deal with the water that has already accumulated in the bottom of the hull. These bilge pumps may be electrically, mechanically, manually or hydraulically operated. Some are automatic. Others require crew input. And the first of the five essential habits I recommend to you is to keep your bilges clean and free of debris. In my work as a marine surveyor since 2008, I've seen a great number of vessels fitted with very basic 12 volt rule mate bilge pumps such as this unit. There's nothing inherently wrong with this type of unit, and they can serve for a long time, but it is the most basic type of pump you can buy. It has a plastic body, a small motor, and a plastic impeller. The slots on the base of the pump act as a coarse filter, but these filters are quickly defeated by cable ties, bits of loose wire, hair grips, safety pins, and other debris. Over time, the bilge of any vessel will accumulate a pleasant concoction of water, oils, food, body hair, and other debris. And keeping the bilge clear of dirt and debris serves two purposes. It gives the bilge pump at least half a chance of saving the vessel when a proper leak does develop, and it also aids routine maintenance and visual checks of the engine space for leaks and anything else underwater. It is so much easier to fault find in, an, in a clean engine room rather than a dirty one with a 10 centimeter puddle of manky brown water in the bilge. The second of the five habits I recommend to you is testing and cleaning the bilge pumps on a regular basis. You need a clean bilge before doing this and some warm water plus some eco-friendly washing up liquid. You can either place the pump unit into a bucket and add the warm soapy water, or tip that into the bilge and allow the pump to work from its normal position. I find it best to disconnect the pump's power supply for 10 minutes or so and let the pump soak in the warm soapy water before reactivating it. Your bilge pump switch may allow for this, or you may have to disconnect it at the battery depending on your setup. Repeat this process for all of your 12 volt bilge pumps and don't forget the manual bilge pump's strong box if you have one fitted. It's worth knowing if your bilge pumps are fully automatic, which I think is a good thing, and better still, if they work with even with the battery switched off. You can test this when cleaning them so you know what level of protection your bilge pumps offer in your absence. If the vessel takes on water whilst unattended and the bilge pumps can't work, sinking is probably inevitable. And yes, you might pay the price of a flat battery, but rather that than a large salvage bill. If you're finding this video insightful, I'd really appreciate you hitting the like button to help spread the word to other boat owners. Thank you. The third of the five essential habits to avoid sinking is exercising all of your seacocks on a monthly basis. Over time, the skin fittings and seacocks on all vessels will deteriorate, and anything metal will start to corrode, desinkify, or fatigue. Opening and closing them, or exercising them, helps to keep the working parts moving, but also helps you keep an eye on their condition. Of course, to do this, you'll need to know where they all are. Whenever I survey a boat, I find all of the skin fittings and list them in my report in a table looking something like this. This information helps my clients find their skin fittings and serves as a useful checklist for them when it comes to routine maintenance and fault finding. For more information on what I look for when surveying skin fittings, check out a video in the link above. The fourth of my five essential habits is to check and clear your drains and scuppers on a regular basis. Most but not all boats will have some form of drain or scupper. It all depends on the design of the superstructure, cabin and deck. They play a vital role in allowing any rainwater to escape and any seawater that comes over the bow, sides or stern to drain away. And when, wet, when waves break over the vessel, the water must be cleared quickly to restore the vessel's freeboard before the next wave breaks. There are several designs of scupper. Some are simply slots in the whole moulding, which allow water to run overboard. Some racing boats have low transoms to achieve the same aim. 
On larger vessels with open decks, freeing ports may be fitted above the loaded waterline, which have hinged flaps to allow water to flood out, but not in. Drains generally have some form of deck fitting with pipe work attached to it. On vessels where the drain is a pipe linking the deck to the hull, there is potential for a blockage, which will allow water to accumulate in the cockpit and lower the freeboard of the vessel. These pipes are normally secured with Jubilee clips or something similar, all of which degrade over time. Looking after your drains on a regular basis should become an essential habit. And here again, a bucket of warm soapy water is your friend. Make sure any drain fittings are clear of leaves and hair. If the drain has a sea clock, then close it, and then fill the pipework with warm soapy water and allow it to stand for 15 minutes before reopening the sea clock and flushing through with more soapy water. Looking after hinged tree imports, it's a simpler but equally important task. They should be easy to rotate and must return to their closed position under gravity alone. Exercising the flaps help to keep them free and moving, and a squirt of oil or a dab of grease on the hinges won't hurt. The last of the five essential habits I recommend to you is having a close-up list for whenever you leave your vessel. Now this is a bespoke list suited to your vessel and its mooring and should act as a checklist. Items on the close-up list might include the following. Check that the hatches and doors are closed and locked. Turn off the gas and fuel lines. Switch off the batteries. Replace any instrument covers, check lockers are locked and check mooring lines and fenders are set up right. And finally, check that any chafe protection is in place. There will be more tasks specific to your vessel and its setup, so take some time to compile a thorough list. The second purpose of a close-up list is to help other people using your boat or closing it up in your absence to at least have a decent chance of doing all the things for you, giving you peace of mind that your beloved boat has been put to bed properly. These five essential habits should help you keep your vessel in good order and safe from sinking on its mooring when you aren't there. If you learned something new watching this video, please consider supporting the channel by buying me a beer using the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.